I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Joe. Digital. Maserati, Rick, and Detroit. The Convertible bird in Miami. Yeah, Miami yo. Graduated summa cum laude. Strip club made a tsunami. Carlton Hines with the ball game. Rayful Edmonds with the snowflakes. Craig Pettis in the M Town. Sal Magluta with the boat game. Falcone with the cocaine. Like Freeway Ricky with the plug game. Like Monster Cody in South Central. Larry Davis from Close Range. Peace, family. I had someone ask me. How do they get rid of fear? And you see, that's a trick question. You don't get rid of fear. Because fear is a natural part of the human experience. It's a part of the human body. It's a part of the flesh. All emotions are. Emotions are not you. You use emotions to fuel you. You get that? So let's look at the opposite end. The opposite end of the spectrum is courage. So obviously that's what he wants. He wants courage. Courage is simply the mastery of fear. That's all it is. It's the mastery of fear. You don't get rid of fear. You never do as long as you got a human body. Unless you can get on some higher level shit. And you know what I mean? And you can actually realize realize that you are not the body okay but that's some real next level stuff that a lot of people don't don't you know get there yet but let's stay with this you you're supposed to use that fear as your fuel that's all you got to do all right the problem becomes when you allow fear to rule you you see so fear isn't it's not a bad thing it's just like water or anything water is not bad or good but your ass can drown in it if you allow it to rule you and you don't rule it it's the same shit okay and that's what i be saying when i'm talking about bitch assness bitch assness that's that's the same as being a coward when you allow and fear to rule you when you allow shit to take you away from the shit that you know you're supposed to be doing that's the same shit that's what I'm talking about when I say bitch assness. It's not fear. Fear is natural. We all have fear. The biggest entertainers, the biggest celebrities, I've read countless biographies of the most successful people in the world. They all still experience fear, even when they at their greatest, even when they graded in the 99%, because it's a part of the flesh, but it's not you. You're not the body. You have a body. OK. So don't allow fear to back you off the shit that, you know, you're supposed to be doing. And as a man. That's an unforgivable act. We're the guardians. We're the soldiers. We're the warriors. We built for sacrifice. We are built to overcome fear. This is what we live for and die for. All right. So you just got to remember that. Take those principles with you. You're not the body. Fear is not bad. Courage is the mastery of fear.
The gunman who killed three law enforcement officers in Baton Rouge searched online for the home addresses of the white officers involved in the shooting death of Alton Sterling. Now that's one of the new details released today after a year-long investigation by the East Baton Rouge District Attorney's Office. Paul Murphy has seen some or has some of those chilling recordings and has this report. A prosecutor's report released new details about last summer's ambush in Baton Rouge that left three law enforcement officers dead and three others injured. Oh, the, guy with a rifle next to the, the report included a recording of the police radio at the scene of the shooting. This is East Baton Rouge Deputy Brad Garafala minutes before he was shot and killed by the lone gunman Gavin Long. Oh, shot fired, officer down, shot fired, officer down. Got a city officer down, shot fired, shot fired on your line. According to the report, Long spotted Baton Rouge police officer Matthew Jarrell walking inside the Be Quick food store on Airline Highway. Garofalo, who was in plain clothes, joined Jarrell in the store. They are soon alerted about a man in black fatigues carrying a rifle in the area. District Attorney Hiller Moore described what happened when the two officers leave the store to investigate and other officers arrive on the scene, including Officer Chad Montgomery. And here comes Montgomery, turns and fires at Montgomery twice and hear how he moves back and forth as Garofalo is engaging him, shooting at him 13 times. Long kills Garofalo, then shoots and kills Gerald, who was lying helplessly on the ground. Long also killed Officer Montrell Jackson before he was taken out by police. Oh, he is down. The gunman wrote a suicide note describing what he was about to do as a necessary evil in order to create substantial change within America's police force and judicial system. Paul Murphy, Eyewitness News. And the report describes shooter Gavin Long as a Marine veteran angry with police treatment of black men. An autopsy report showed he had a small amount of alcohol and also crystal meth in his system the day of that shooting. The DA said Long got off 43 high-powered rounds before he was killed by tactical officers. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy Popalot. Mob ties. We're on our way to Kansas City, Missouri with it. But we're going to end up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Shit all going to go down for real, for real. Now, today, we're going to cover a guy by the name of Gavin Long. Gavin Eugene Long, to be exact. And I can bet I'm, I'm, I'm going to say 50%, but I really want to say 80% of y'all clicked on this and probably don't even know the name is like the interest. And some of y'all do know the name. Um, it's from something that happened um, fairly recently and it has a lot to do with what's going on right now. I'm not even really going to discuss the, inc the incident. I'm just going to kind of get into the video. This is kind of going to tell you a little bit about I want to say where the world is. If you were in the United States, I know we got subs from everywhere else. Matter of fact, this is what this is what I want to do. Like any of the subs that we got, any subscribers that are not in the United States, I want y'all to get in the comment box and y'all let it be known. Like what are y'all seeing? What are, what is y'all view of of the United States? Of things like um, racism, uh, I want y'all to get out and and let us know about maybe even racism in your country. If it's even different, different nationalities and different things like that. But not to get too off topic, we're gonna cover a guy named Gavin Long. Um, he was born July seventeenth, nineteen eighty seven, Kansas City, Missouri. Well, my name's Kansas City, Missouri. I need to get in the comment box. Let it be known. Um, and he also spent time in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So if you're from Baton Rouge, y'all go ahead, get in the comment box, let it be known, real G shit. Um, yeah, I don't I don't even really want to get in give up the story too much. So we just really gonna get into it. We're gonna do this one a little bit different, like we did a few others in the past, and then y'all get in the comment box and y'all let me know. Um, pretty much what y'all think about it. But also, what else, What the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link to a video of the guy 
that we're covering today. And I want y'all to go to that channel and look at some of those comments. It's your boy Popola. Mob, 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 ties. Gavin Eugene Long grew up in Kansas City and graduated from high school in 2005. His parents divorced when he was 11, and his father was neglectful of Long, according to court records. He failed to appear on scheduled visits with his son while the divorce was pending, and did not deliver birthday or Christmas presents to him. Court records described one instance where Long was picked up by his father, but dropped off at a daycare facility at a casino shortly after. Long served in the U.S. Marine Corps as a data network specialist from August 22, 2005, to August 1, 2010. He was honorably discharged with the rank of sergeant. During his military service, he was deployed to Iraq from June 2008 to January 2009. He was also assigned to units in San Diego, California, and Okinawa, Japan. Long was awarded the Good Conduct Medal, along with an Iraq Campaign Medal, a National Defense Service Medal, a Navy Unit Commendation, and others. Following his military service, Long told relatives and friends that he suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. He reportedly had prescriptions for Ativan and Valium, both anti-anxiety drugs, Lunesta, a sleep aid, and Citalopram, an antidepressant. Health records from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs reportedly indicated contacts with Long from 2008 to August 2013. The VA records said that Long told doctors that he contracted PTSD after a friend showed him photos of maimed and decapitated bodies while they were in Iraq. In November 2011, Doctors debunked Long's suspicions of PTSD and instead diagnosed him as having adjustment disorder with depressed mood. They eventually concluded that he was mentally stable, with no evidence that he was a threat to himself or others. According to Long's mother, the VA then sent him a letter denying him further treatment on the grounds that his disorder was not related to his military service. Long's mental health and related combat experience may have been a factor leading to the shooting. Long graduated from Central Texas College, attending the college's San Diego site at Marine Corps Air Station Miramar and via an online education program from fall 2007 to summer 2011, he received an Associate of Arts degree in General Studies. Long studied at Clark Atlanta University during the 2012-13 academic year. Long also spent one semester at the University of Alabama, in spring 2012, with his name making it to the dean's list as a general business major. According to local court records, Long had no criminal record and was married for two years before the couple divorced. Long was identified as a black separatist by a law enforcement official. Mass shooting scholars said that Long displayed hallmarks of a disgruntled, paranoid loner, with a narcissistic and grandiose personality. Social media posts indicated that he was an active member of the anti-government New Freedom Group. According to CNN, a card was found on Long's body, suggesting that he was a member of the Washita Nation a group of African Americans associated with the sovereign citizen movement that originated in Richwood. In addition to changing his legal name, he claimed his nationality was United Washita de Dugdama and Diama, and expressed his support for the Moorish Science Temple of America, another African American organization associated with the sovereign citizen movement. However, Long disavowed all prior associations in a recent video, saying, don't affiliate me with nothing, I'm affiliated with the spirit of justice. In April 2015, while in West Africa, Long also became a member of a group dedicated to helping targeted individuals suffering from remote brain experimentation, remote neural monitoring of an entire human's body. He asked to be put on the group's buddy list, but he unexpectedly deactivated his account a month later.
His mother said he once believed the Central Intelligence Agency was following him. He appeared as a guest on an online show discussing targeted individuals, but downplayed his belief that he was being tracked, saying, that's just a small aspect of me. It's not a complete picture of who I am. However, the show's host, who had frequent phone and email correspondence with Long, claimed that Long was adamant about being tracked during their communications. In a rambling series of YouTube clips, Long claimed to be a former Nation of Islam member and referred to Alton Sterling, a black man killed by Baton Rouge police officers on July 5, in online videos. Long operated his YouTube channel under his new legal name, Cosmo Seti Penra, making references to oppression against blacks and police protests. At one point less than two weeks before committing the shooting, Long called the shootings of five Dallas police officers an act of justice. In one video, he said, 100% of revolutions have been successful through fighting back through bloodshed. In another, he said the act of peaceful protesting was a futile method based on emotion and was easily forgettable. Long also maintained a personal website in which he described himself as a freedom strategist, mental game coach, nutritionist, author and spiritual advisor. The website contained dozens of additional videos and podcasts. Long wrote and self-published three books about how to be a strong man and self-empowerment for black males, which all appeared on Amazon.com in October and November 2015. The books were described by the Los Angeles Times as bizarre works featuring a combination of New Age style jargon, pseudoscience, motivational bromides, health tips and racial theory. In the books, Long harshly criticized Western medicine, denied the germ theory of disease, and asserted that the abundance of melanin in black humans produces a superior organism both mentally and physically. The books were pulled from Amazon.com after the shooting. According to one of his books, he spent two years in several African countries studying their histories and cultures. In addition to the books, Long wrote two diaries, one in 2014 and the other in 2015, where he shared rambling thoughts about philosophy, religion, and politics. Sahib Taylor, a nephew of Long, told the Los Angeles Times that his uncle would teach him about the importance of self-reliance, share his views on racism, and assert that only advanced survival skills and decisive action could overthrow the U.S. government. Taylor said that Long recently began sharing his beliefs that international corporations, federal banks, and political organizations were influencing ethnic groups for their own gain, and that the government was using police to control and kill people. Within the preceding six months, Long visited the shooting range of a gun shop in Olathe, Kansas, and purchased a target that he used in shooting practice, according to an employee. The same employee also said Long did not purchase any firearms or exhibit any strange behavior at the store. In a 10-minute video, Long claimed that he arrived at Baton Rouge not to protest Sterling's death, but to educate local blacks. He also expressed his distaste for white people and mentioned Huey P. Newton, co-founder of the Black Panther Party, in a rambling, one-sided conversation. He had previously made a similar recording using a body camera while visiting barbershops in Dallas some time after the shooting there, to promote one of his books. A friend said that Long visited him in DeSoto, Texas, two days after the Dallas shooting. During the visit, Long obsessively watched video footage of Sterling's death and praised the Dallas shooter Mike Azavia Johnson, saying at least he did something. The same friend said that Long also showed him a Wash It or Nation card and unsuccessfully urged him to join. Long's mother said that he would get upset at news stories of black men being shot by police, often renting cars and use them to drive to locations where such shootings occurred to pass out his books. Less than an hour before the shooting, Long purportedly emailed a three-page, handwritten letter, self-described as a manifesto, to a Columbus, Ohio, musician whose YouTube videos he commented on. In the letter, Long described his belief that the shooting was necessary to create substantial change within America's police force.
He also wrote his belief that there was a concealed war between good cops and bad cops, and that he had to attack bad cops as vengeance for perceived destruction that they continued to inflict on blacks. Although Long was said to have acted alone in the shooting, police arrested and questioned two other people in Addis as part of the investigation. They were later identified as Demarcus Alexander, a cousin of slain victim Corporal Montrell Jackson, and Alexander's friend Dentrell White. According to them, police held them for seven hours, barring them from making any phone calls and refusing to give Alexander diabetic medication even after they were made aware of his condition. Both were eventually released without any charges being filed. At the time, Alexander was unaware of Jackson's death during the shooting. A spokesman for the Louisiana State Police responded to Alexander's claim of police mistreatment, saying, no complaints or concerns have been brought to our attention. Following this shooting and a previous one in Dallas, Texas, that killed five police officers and wounded nine others, local law enforcement agencies across the U.S. began readjusting response strategies, with more officers being paired up in patrol vehicles. On July 28, the victims of the shooting were honored at a memorial service in Healing Place Church in Baton Rouge. Hundreds of people were in attendance. Governor Edwards, Vice President Joe Biden, Attorney General Loretta Lynch, and the wives of the victims made speeches during the service. For more information, please follow the link below the video.